Mm, no, I'm actually I'm gonna drink this beer instead of talking to you guys. But I, I take it back. I'll uh, I'll actually do my job here for a little bit. Uh, and welcome everybody. This is gonna be our second show down here at HBYOB Homebrewing Your Own Beer. I'm Chris Allen. I will be the I guess the the host uh, if you want to call it that because it's really not necessarily a, a show. Let's say, but it's gonna be a I don't know, a banter podcast. It could be a class for 10, 15 minutes. It's going to be a, a number of things. But uh, as always, I'm here with the proprietor of HPYOB, Joy Brumley. And uh, we've got, I guess, maybe a couple announcements. So we're going to talk about a schedule. We're going to, I mean, maybe host like a maybe a quick class over, I guess, the the basics for homebrewing. But Joey, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you, Chris? I, I mean, I was trying to drink a beer like before you stopped me. But other than that, I'm doing all right. All right. Well, Chris is literally my right hand man today. Remember to say that this time. Um, I came with my dressed up. I got the uniform on and everything. So I'm good. So we just kind of wanted to go over what we were up to. We want to do this monthly. Um, today we're going to be going over getting started, just your basic uh, starting equipment, mm -hmm. things of that nature. We're going to get into that in just a moment. We're going to give some people some time to log in. Next month, uh, February 19th, our uh, topic will be packaging. And we will also be doing a side-by-side -side comparison on two beers. One will be bottle conditioned. And one will be kegged, right? And see if we can tell the difference on that. Mm -hmm. um, so that those are the two things that we're going to go over next week. Uh, if you want, you can come in the store. You can view us live here in the store. We're going to do a, like a bottle share where we all get together. Yeah. Um, we're going to the, the the beers that we're trying or we're talking about for the next one. You can come in. You can drink. Uh, See if you can tell the difference between them. Then we'll go over it with the cast. You don't have to be on the cast. You're more than welcome to come in if you want to come anytime from six o'clock on. Yep. Heckle us for an hour or so. Yep. Uh, I guess now would be a good time to introduce Mark. Uh, he's our online buddy today. I guess online okay. buddy. Yeah, I know that's a different title. I, next next month though, if we're going to be drinking beer, I'll be your in store buddy. Um, if we're actually going to be drinking. And this will be what the, and this is just a side thing. This will be what the second time you and I have actually seen each other in person for, for as most, for as much as we've talked over the last couple of years, we've only seen each other in person it's twice, been three football seasons. Right. Right. <laughs> this is actually kind of wild. I mean, but that's, so that'd be interesting. I mean, it'd be good to actually, you know, have a beer with you since the last time I saw you, you had like what a 12 pack of Heineken. So right. we can actually maybe drink some real beer and tonight. And I have. have Turn on the juice, ten percent mm. hazy IPA. That's a good Go one too. I, I sampled that uh, a couple weeks ago, bought a six pack of that, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. So I, I would recommend you can probably pick that up almost anywhere. To be quite yeah. honest, so. it's a very smooth ten percenter. Uh, I will, I will give you that. So. I would agree. I would well, agree. thanks for letting me log in and be a part of this, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a hold of some Hop Slam. I think that's out right now. I believe that, so. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a really tasty beer. Yeah. Um, but like I said, whether you want to come in store, if you want to be like Mark and you you want to be on the, the live stream, or honestly, if you just want to view it from home, feel free to chat in the chat box just like you can right now. Um, if you want to be online, all you got to do is send me a direct message and I'll provide you with a link and it's very uh, easy to get logged in and get going. So we want to do it on the third Wednesday of every month. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a poll of the topics for the future. Uh, being that we're brewing beer, we have to plan quite a bit ahead of time because especially for brewing beers to sample, I, I got to give you all plenty of time to uh, brew the beers. I'm not probably or I'm not going to be brewing the majority of the beers. I'd like to donate the equipment or supplies or ingredients, whatever it may be for the different tastings that we are going to do. So that would be fun. Uh, like I said, we're going to have like a two month lead on that. So it gives yeah. you plenty of time to brew the beers. Mm -hmm. Um it just so happened when we started this, I already had something with a customer for the ones that we're doing next month. So we've already got that one covered. Yeah. Uh, but I guess uh, if you guys are all ready now. We can get right into the topic of today. Well, let yeah. me real real quick because you did tell. I mean, if people in the future do want to come on, I know I have a microphone in front of me, but just to let people know, you just need a cell phone and some earbuds with a microphone. Yep. So in the future, people who want to join us, you don't need any fancy equipment or anything. So. Right, yeah, right. Just to kind of, I think, let uh, people know. actually, that was the way that, uh, and this is just uh, to shout out 
the work that Mark and I do for football, but we actually had a uh, Wes Martin uh, offensive lineman for the Washington Redskins. Actually, he logged in uh, through his phone and actually we had a conversation with him this past summer uh, and he did it the exact same way. He was just on his phone and talking with us for about 45 minutes or so. Yeah, uh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. You don't have to have any sort of high tech setup like what Joey has here or what my, my both myself and Mark have at home. So it doesn't really matter. Our very first podcast was done with the earbuds that come with a uh, with an iPhone, right? iPhone. Yeah. yeah. So you really don't need anything. Uh, we had Bill. Remember, was yeah. you was you with us when Bill yep. uh, mm-hmm. got on when uh, he won the home brewing competition? He came in and talked about his brewing setup. So we're going to jump straight into it right now. Um, Mark, I'm going to get ready here for just a moment. So basically what's going on today is we're going to go over just your basic things that you're going to need to get home brewing. Um, and this is a lot of stuff, man, because you've got, we've got equipment back here. I mean, I have a, uh, an extract kit sitting right beside me and we'll talk about that, like the ins and outs of some of the ingredients that you'll see in here, but it may seem like a lot. So for folks that are watching at either at like live right now or they're going to be watching this later on I mean, don't be intimidated by all the stuff that you see yeah i mean while it's required like you'll definitely need it but there'll be enough tips that we'll talk about tonight that i mean you'll wind up using it but you'll just it'll feel natural i mean for in a sense because you'll just need to use most of these things in order to get the job done so i guess with that being said we're not talking beer we're we're not talking wine we're basically just talking anything that you want to ferment brewing is what we're general. brewing equipment to get started. So today's not a beer themed, you know, being that we are more of a beer oriented store. This is not beer themed early on. A lot of people come in wanting to make mead. So I'm going to walk through exactly what I'd have them get. Okay. Very first thing, sanitizer. Okay. So we got some sanitizer right here. I mean, there are other sanitizers, but I mean, this is probably just like the most common. If you were to walk into any brew store, I mean, you'll likely find bottles of this sitting there, sitting on the shelf somewhere. So it's one of the easiest ones you can pick up. Yeah, absolutely. Star Sand is always what I recommend to people. Once again, if you're brewing on a budget, you can just use bleach. Yeah. Uh, there is a ratio of a small amount of bleach mixed with water. You got to rinse it. This is a no rinse, so you don't have to. So first thing I would say before we get anywhere, Star Sand. That would be first on my checklist. Yeah. Um, the next piece of equipment would be a fermenter. Yep. Any one of those big old buckets. So this is for a five gallon batch. We have one gallon, three gallon, six gallon, six mm-hmm. and a half. Gallon. I mean, you name it. They come in plastic, glass, stainless steel. Now, is this the one that has a spigot on it? Or... No, nope, that's okay. behind me. Got it. All right. You can use one with the spigot. Uh, our topic for next uh, next class will actually be more on um, packaging. So we'll go over bottling buckets then. But mm-hmm. today is just about. How do I get it in the fermenter? Because we both know the hardest part of brewing is waiting. Right. So right now it's let's get home. Let's get something in, you know, let's get something going. Right. Mm-hmm. Our, all fermenters need to be airtight, whether it's a lid, mm-hmm. a stopper, uh, you know, their seals, different, different things. But we're just talking an um, easier method of it. Um, so you got your fermenter. All right. Then the next thing would be an airlock. Just a simple airlock goes into the hole of the fermenter. Um, if if it's a glass carboy, there are rubber stoppers that you can put in there. Um, there's all kinds of different ways. It, very easy to get it going. Once again, not going to break the budget. No. Um, but that's really all you need. Outside of that, I think that's honestly all you need to get started. Quick when question, it, though. Uh, so I've I've seen these. I have at least one of these at home. They also have what the S style airlocks. Now, would you recommend either one? Because I know folks once they go up to the shelf, they might see these. They might see the S type. I mean, is there any I guess specific type that you would recommend? Well, so go. my fermenter over here. Let's yeah, go. Uh, S style is what I prefer. I do not like the ones that are there. Me too. That's me, my personal preference. I prefer these. Uh, generally speaking, the the one that comes with our kits uh, is known for primary fermentation. This is for secondary. They work exactly the same. The reason why these are referred to for secondary is they're a pain in the ass to clean. So <laughs> yeah, <that's absolutely laughs> I really can't think of any other way to say it other than these suck to clean. So if you're doing primary and you have yeast or something, climb up into it. Yeah, it's it's, you're pretty much tossing it. Nice thing. These are a buck. Yeah. So um, I use these all the time because I have my beer. It ferments with the other or, you know, whatever I have fermenting in the bucket. I go to pick it up to do the next step. And guess what happens to this? All the water that's in here sucks into the fermenter. Yep. Happened enough. I don't use them anymore. Yeah. But 
uh, the books will tell you those are for uh, primary. These are for secondary. Doesn't make a difference. Right. Some people even use a blow off. So, yep. I mean, if yeah. you really wanted to, you can. We won't get too in, into depth in some of these. Is just get you started. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I mean, that's your basic, basic. That's how you get fermenting. Yeah. I would add a stir spoon to it. Um, if you're beer brewing or dealing with boiling wort, you know, using just a wood spoon probably wouldn't be the greatest idea. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're brewing stuff, you want your own designated equipment, I guess would be the, uh, I guess the, the rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I tell people all the time, you don't even see a brew pot here today. Mm -hmm. If you want to get started, I tell people, if you've got a big stock pot that holds three gallons or more, I, unfortunately I keep talking about beer, but mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, if you have a stock pot that holds three gallons or more, you really don't need to, uh, I, you don't need get to go a pot from us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could start simple. Yeah. Like, for example, our five gallon beer starter equipment sets uh, 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's plenty of equipment to get you going, but it does require some stuff around the house. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that would be your basics uh, to, just, to get you going. Obviously, your ingredients are going to be, but, you know, being that we're not narrowing into, you know, a certain style right now. Right. So, that would be your basic just to get going. Mm -hmm. My next tier of things I would recommend would be a hydrometer. Because no matter what you're making without a hydrometer, you will not know your alcohol by volume. Also, you will not know that your uh, beverage is done fermenting. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically what this does is it tells you your starting sugar content. Um, and then you also know towards the end that a fermentation did complete. Mm -hmm. um, it did work. And then it also lets you know your alcohol by volume. If you right. want to know that with calculators, you'll also get your calorie counts. That's right. pretty cool too. Uh-huh. So that would be on my next, uh, you know, kind of essential to get started. A quick question with those. Now with hydrometers, I know that, uh, I guess, how much do, uh, what's the typical volume that you need in order to actually test those or actually to use them correctly? Because I've seen folks, I mean, we have the, uh, we have the test tubes here. A lot of folks like wind up filling up their wort, like fill up the test tubes with some wort. They can drop it in and do it, uh, do it that way. Uh, I know other folks like me personally, like once I'm actually done brewing, I get my work like down to 70, 75. Uh, then I just I just wind up dropping it right in the bucket. Like before I pitch, you can do it that way. Uh, so, I mean, there are multiple, I guess there are multiple times or multiple places that you can wind up using that hydrometer. I guess what's your personal preference when you whenever you try to use it? So getting started, I tell people all the time, just put it in the fermenter. If you're yeah. using a bucket like this, there's a plenty wide enough opening. Just drop it Float in. it right in there. Yeah. Um, now, when you aerate and then some more advanced uh, terminology, it is good to have a test jar because if you aerate it, there's going to be a whole bunch of foam, so you won't be able to get an accurate reading. Absolutely. But yeah. um, honestly, I just tell people getting started, just knock the foam out of the way, float it in there. See you'll know. You now, if you're using a glass carboy, that is not possible because um, you won't get it back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's no but, way uh, to pick that thing up. But I would say the next thing, a goodie, not a necessity, but a, another goodie to have is just a stick-on thermometer. You just uh, put that, I don't know if the camera can see it, you just put it on the thermometer or put it on your fermenter, and I don't think you can see it, but basically it just lights up uh, where, whatever temperature it is. Mm -hmm. I went, uh, because I'm like, I get kind of nerdy with this stuff, I just bought like a digital thermometer on Amazon for like 15 bucks. And it has like the, it does, it calculates like the, it gives you like the humidity readout and it gives you like temperature readout like in the, in the area. So if I wanted to, I don't know, if I wanted to ferment in my office, I could like just set it in there like the day prior and see if it's in the right temperature. If I wanted to move it to my bedroom, even though like my wife wanted to shoot me because the, the activity was going through the airlock the entire night. I mean, there are options for you to kind of move the stuff around and, and, and do something like that. So if you want to, you know, move past that, because I'm assuming how much does this cost? Like 50 cents? They're not much. Yeah. So if you wanted to go all out, I mean, that would probably be on the high side. Yeah. 10, 15 bucks or something like that, that you would probably need in order to do that. I've got quick read thermometers. I've got the little ones that you shoot like a gun and yeah, those the laser. Yeah. I don't really like those too yeah. much, but ultimately you don't need anything fancy. Just a sticker on the side to make sure you didn't pitch your yeast at the wrong temperatures really mm -hmm. to get started. All you need uh, down the road, we have ink birds. Which, I mean, there's a whole lot of other ways you can go about personal preference actually starts to play into, into it a little bit, sure. but I'm just looking at the bare bones saying to get started, get rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. um, so the next thing I would say is, uh, a, a siphon, I would definitely recommend picking up. If I can get it without knocking all the stuff over. 
So once again, we'll get into packaging a siphon. This one's really nice. It's just an auto siphon. You just pump it. This, oops, sorry. Uh, the the siphon gets started, and there's tubing that comes with it in our kit, and makes it real simple. Anytime you're fermenting a beverage, I can't think of any that you want it splashing around. No. Nope. So the easiest way to go about that is to siphon it. That way, the beverage is not splashing around, and you can transfer it whether it is to bottling, kegging, secondary. Doesn't really matter. You're going to have to move it around at some point. Yeah. Um, so, I couldn't imagine trying to like pour uh, pour your beer from your or whatever you're brewing from your bucket to your keg without using a, a siphon. I mean, trying to do that would be, I mean, nearly impossible without the stuff getting everywhere. When people come in, they're like, you know, what's the bare bones stuff I need to get started? It's it's definitely on my. I actually put the siphon over the uh, hydrometer at that point because oh. I mean. If you want to make some homemade hooch and you don't want to know the alcohol by volume, you I just mean, know that it's got some kick to it. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, then you get into things like down the road, where, like with our kit, you get a bottle cleaning brush. You don't really need that right away if you're buying everything new. Uh, this hooks to the end of your bottling bucket or your siphon tubing. Mm -hmm. I would say this is a you must a must have. Yeah. A lot of people, what it does is it fills your bottles up. There's a little spring down here. I don't know if you can see that. And then two things happen when you take it out of your bottle. Um, it stops the flow. So you can go to your next bottle without it making a, a gigantic mess. Yes. Also, it leaves the perfect headspace if you're doing wine or beer. Mm -hmm. The displacement of the plastic uh, come into play really no, nice with good. that. Yeah, that is useful. So um, outside of that, I mean, the next thing would be when you are ready to bottle. We sell bottling buckets, which is just like a fermenter, except there's a spigot at the bottom that's just got a hole in it. I don't have the, uh, yeah, the thing that's out front. Yeah, but uh, And then lastly, I would say to get going, you need your, if you're doing, say, beer, ciders, a couple, yeah. anything you're going to uh, carbonate. Uh, you've yeah. got your basic capper. And then um, I actually like the handheld one, um, best of all, out yeah. of all the different style cappers. And if you're getting into wine, I hate this thing. <laughs> But I've never used one of those before. You will wrestle with this thing like you cannot believe. If you're doing if you're doing a handful of of wine bottles, this does get the job done. It's a corker. I guess okay. that's what I would say. You know, your wines, your things that aren't carbonated, if you want yeah, to put into wine okay. bottles. Oh, you will wrestle with this thing. No thanks. We sell a floor corker. That's what I'm getting to. It is more expensive. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but it is, in my opinion, the best investment ever because my kids use it and so I don't have to cork <laughs> bottles. <laughs> Versus this, there's no way they could do it. They'd have wine all over the place, right. and it'd be all over the floor because it slides on the neck. I won't get into why I don't like this, but beer-wise, I love the hand corker, uh, mm -hmm. and then wine-wise, I like the floor corker. We sell a floor corker of the beer as well. I don't like it because I feel like I'm moving the backstop all the time because mm. over the years of home brewing, I've got like a half a dozen different style bottles, so okay. the backstop has to be moved all the time versus the floor corker. Won't bore you into that. It doesn't it's spring loaded on the bottom with the corks, so you don't run into that. It's really, really nice. It's worth the investment. Okay. So I'm going through all of this. I mean, we went through what seven or eight different pieces of equipment right there. So again, don't freak out. It's just like again, bare bones and most of the primary stuff that you would wind up needing in order to do pretty much any style. I mean, again. We mostly do beer here because that's that's our personal preference. But if you're into anything from wine to, I guess, like kombucha, like you could probably do most of that stuff in the things that we've discussed here tonight. Yeah. But, but for, let's say for, I would say for any of the stuff that's up here right now, what's the, what's the total cost that most folks be walking out the door if they need to get something like all this? I mean, honestly, if say you're doing one gallon batches of mead, you're talking under 20 bucks. Wow. So, I mean... It depends on what you're wanting to ferment, mm -hmm. how big, you know, a lot of people doing mead. Usually I have so many people, including myself, only like to do one gallon batches. Okay. Yeah. So the equipment's cheaper. Uh, beer usually revolves around five gallons and wine usually revolves around six gallons. Don't sure. know why. Probably has to do with the metric system. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Six gallons, huh? Okay. It's 30, exactly 30 bottles <laughs> of 750 milliliter bottles. I don't All know right. if it has anything to do with it. It's just, <laughs> that's, that's just the way they sell it. Yeah, that's uh, what they but the, I would say, you know, to get started, you really don't need a budget, a, a big budget at all to get going. And like I said, feel free to come in, ask me, I can get you started for like my first starter kit. Mm -hmm. Well, what wasn't gifted to me? I mean, yeah. I got basically the cost of ingredients. Yeah. So, I mean, we can really get you started if, you know, prices is, is a factor for you. Now, if price is no object, I can also hook you up with some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> but um, yeah, 
Because I, the... I was advocating for bringing out the stir plate and all the other stuff. Man, so, <laughs> yeah, but we'll get into the advanced stuff like later on. Yeah, we're going to get into the more advanced stuff. Like I said, I'm trying to uh, do this more to just get you started with the with the hobby. Yeah. Um, outside of that, like I said, depending on what you're going to brew would be the biggest factor. Yeah. Um, biggest key, no matter what you're doing, is your sanitation. I mean, I should probably just leave that there. Um, the nice thing about this one is there's if you squeeze the bottle, I don't, you probably can't see it, but you can squeeze the bottle and it'll measure it out for you. Um, even just a half an ounce gets you two and a half gallons diluted into water. Mm -hmm. um, you aren't don't have to dump it when you use it the first time. I save my sanitizer for bottling day, mm -hmm. which will be next uh, topic we talk about. Yep. But whether you're no matter what beverage you're doing. I highly recommend Star Santa. A bottle like this will last you a year. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't go bad, and, and it works out fantastic. Like I said, there are other ways you can do. You you can go about it. So I guess the yeah. so before we go on to where we're going next, this is a no rinse sanitizer. So basically, just thirty seconds is what the I believe what they tell you of contact time. Mm -hmm. uh, thirty seconds of contact time. It's no rinse. It does foam. You don't have to fear the foam. You just dump it out. You don't have to wait to. You don't have to wait for it to drip dry, and you can just go ahead and put your beverage right in there. So with that being said, I would recommend get picking up a stir spoon, I told you. And then yep. at that point, sanitize your airlock, sanitize your fermenting bucket, any equipment you're going to use. Mm -hmm. If you're brewing beer, which is what we're going to talk about, you know, getting going for your first batch of beer. Yeah. Um, anything that comes to the boil during your brew day, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Um. So what I mean by that is you don't have to sanitize it because the boiling wort, which is a term for unfermented beer, is sanitizing itself. Sure. So like mm -hmm. your boil pot, your stir spoon, your ingredients, um, your wort, else, if you yeah. get a wort chiller down yeah. the road. I mean, anything during your brew day, you don't have to worry about sanitizing it because the boiling wort is uh, um, going to work. It as it goes. Yep. So um, with that being said, that kind of goes over just your basic equipment to get going. Like I said, come visit me in the store, HBYOB, and you can and I will get you catered to whatever works best for your needs. Mm -hmm. So like I said, uh, I do ask people all the time, you know, what's your budget? So I, we can stay in line with that. And like okay. I said, no matter how small, no matter how large, we'll get you we'll get you tailored to the right thing. Yeah. And I think with most folks, I mean, most folks would if it's just a hobby. They want to try and get into it. So you want to try and, I guess, maybe dip your toe in. That's probably one of the easiest ways for you to dip your toe in, like try and purchase the bare bones. And then as you get used to it, as you get more advanced, or even as you just really start to enjoy it, you can start adding on more things. So like we were talking about earlier, you get the just like the basic you know temperature strip for like 50 cents or however much this costs. And then as you get more in depth into it and you want to try and figure out how much does temperature affect your brewing, yeah, then you go over to Amazon, you buy one of those digital thermometers for like 15 bucks or whatever. You want to start off slow and maybe start with just the hydrometer here. Okay, and that's fine. But later on, you want to try and figure out like what your sugar content is like during the mash itself. And so then after that, you want to purchase, I can never remember, refractometer. So you want to you know, purchase one of those. Yeah. I mean, so it, there are ways that you can kind of build off of the things that you're we're talking about right here. So you can go from beginners, kind of dip your toe in, spend the minimum amount. And as you start to learn more, you can build off of that as you kind of dig in more into the, I guess, the science behind home brewing. And like as far as thermometers go, we got ones that clip onto your brew pot so you can monitor it while it's brewing. We've got ink birds that can monitor it while it's fermenting. So we've got other thermometer and we've got floating. I mean, we've got a lot of other thermometer yeah. options here in the store. So many toys, so many toys to play with. So with that being said, a lot of people come in. Uh, we just got past Christmas season mm -hmm. and they get their first kit. They get it home and I get the question of, do you guys have classes? Do you, um, you know, have any tips? Do you have any pointers? Yeah. I am talking beer. Like I said, uh, you know, we do sell a lot of beer making stuff. Um, so the first batch, I always recommend someone to do, even if you have been with a buddy, even if you have watched a lot of YouTube videos, mm -hmm. I always recommend your first one, just do it to do an extract batch of beer, just because it doesn't require any special equipment other than what you have. And, so the first thing I tell people to get started with their um, recipe is I always say, get it home. You can give me those instructions right there. Yeah. If you get a, uh, a, can you also show me, show them the box, what that looks like. There's these brewer's best uh, recipes. They have everything in there for you. So even your caps, even your caps, if you can show them some caps, your priming yeah. sugar. So once you have your equipment, truly, yeah. 
all you need. Awesome, Everything man. is reusable, but your ingredients. So your bottles. Um, so everything you need for your second batch Prime of beer sugar. is it comes in comes provided in these kits. And I tell people, go home, read the instructions. It's truly one sheet front and back. And that walks you through everything brewing that you need to know. Yeah. Well, for now, Yeah. <laughs> but to get you brewing. So a lot of people will even, you know, you get there and there is some contradictory. How do you say that word? Contradictory. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, information on here that will, uh, um, contradict itself, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it will, it, so when you run into that, it basically means there's not one right way or wrong way to brew a batch of beer. Right. I mean, there are general guidelines, but if you follow these instructions, if you see something that says, well, it says rehydrate, it says rehydrate your yeast in one spot and the next bottle say not to, yeah. or just a sprinkle it on your wart. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people do whatever you feel comfortable with. So if you see something that's like, wait, it says it to do it one way here, one way means you can do either or yeah. you'll make good beer. Yeah. So the biggest thing I tell people is I have four. We went over this right. four things that if you do this and you only worry about this and you can really come off the rails in every other way, Let's see you, if you will, remember them. You will not screw them up. Yeah. First thing is specialty grains. Can you show them what the specialty grains are? Our kits. Some 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 of them don't on the lifestyle beers come with uh, specialty grains. And if you can show me, give me a muslin bag. It comes with this little pantyhose looking thing. You put these grains into this bag. I had a guy who came here and got new specialty grains because yeah. he threw them in the pot oh. and then put them in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so he just got specialty oh, grains. Yeah, but, everywhere. So step one is the specialty grains. Put them in the sock. Yeah. That was not part of my bullet point, but put them in the sock. But mm -hmm. don't bring them to a boil. Mm -hmm. There's definitely, and a lot of people will argue with me, but there's a lot of leadway with it as far as temperature goes with specialty grains. Sure. Just shy of boiling them, don't worry about it. So don't if the directions say you know 160, 155 degrees, whatever they may say, don't worry too much. Just mm -hmm. uh, you'll be all right. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Palmer always said you know don't worry, oh. just drink a homebrew <laughs> or have a homebrew. Yeah. Just just shy of boiling, don't worry about them. Yeah. Second bullet point would be malts. When you add your malts, they come in two forms: dry. Well, grain, but mm -hmm. uh, as far as extracts go, you get dry and you get liquid. Mm -hmm. When you're adding these bad boys, take turn your burner off, take your pot off the burner. Yeah, I've I, seen it. I've seen your brew pot, and I tell everybody about it. <laughs> Thanks, thank you for that. Because what happens when you add them while your burner is going full bore? Uh, so, well, two things. I mean, the 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 way that this works, I wish we could actually open this can so, can, so the people can it's actually like see this. Yeah, it looks like molasses. So if the so one, if this can or like the liquid that's inside here isn't actually warmed up to the at least even close to the temperature that you're going to be mashing at, uh, it's the the liquid itself is basically like a syrup. It's going to drop to the bottom of your pan, and then if you have your heat source on, it's going to wind up scorching the bottom of your pan. I wound up actually ruining a batch that way, and actually I both ruined the batch and my pot because down at the bottom of my pan was just a bunch of scorched uh, liquid uh, liquid malt. So, yeah, not all that useful. I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you do have that happen, Barkeeper's friend will be yes. will be your friend. It will yes. help with some really, really, really stubborn, mm -hmm. like outside of PBW when you're talking yeah. stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, number two is when you add your malts, turn the burner off, take the pot off the burner. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a buddy and you stir it in slow that for your first work. time, take it off the burner, turn yes. it off. Still do that. Yeah. Step or bullet point number three would be. Oh, watch it like a hawk when it's coming <laughs> to a boil. So when it's coming to a boil, everybody has had macaroni and cheese and left, been making macaroni and cheese, left, and what happens? It foams all over the damn place. Yeah. And with beer, not only does it foam all over the place, it's called a hot break, yeah. but not only does it foam all over the place, it is a big, sticky mess, and you will get kicked into the garage Oh yeah. or the basement. Mm -hmm. Whoever uh, is in charge of the kitchen will never let you brew in the kitchen again. That never. is for sure. And if it's you, you'll not even want to do it anymore. No. Yeah. So watch it like a hawk when it's coming to a boil. Even when you add your first hop addition, mm -hmm. watch it, watch it, watch it. All you got to do is lift the pot up, turn the burner down, wait for your beer to come to a good rolling boil. Even when you add your first hop addition, watch it like a hawk. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should walk away from it at that point. 
but once you've got past the hot break, good methods are. I've seen some people spray squirt bottles. I think that's I, I don't like it. Um, I, pers- I I have before because I normally keep a squirt bottle of just star like filled with star sand like on on hand like while I'm doing it. And if I start to see it build up, I will just take it, just spray it on the top. Now whether that's uh, affecting my beer or you know whatever, I guess I haven't really looked into that, but it, it's it's helped at least in that regard. Well, doing that the. <laughs> You know, oh, blowing on it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to do that. Like that hasn't really been as effective. Uh, and I don't want to put my I don't want to put my face next to like boiling water. Yeah, I have a like a, a wicked, wicked burn from boiling wort where I left the lid on, but that's a topic for another day. Um just when it's when it's when it's trying to do it, honestly, just lifting the pot up if it's not, you know, a, a whole lot of wort helps mm-hmm. out tremendously. Turning your burner down. Yeah. Don't stir it too fast, but stir it that'll that'll help Mm -hmm. just to get it through that hot break like i said if because once it climbs it climbs and it goes and and once it goes i've been on the recipient end of it on more than one occasion you think you're going to do this you're going to go do that and and you lose track of time and next thing you know you hear from the basement yeah and you know it's happening yeah and it's basically like caramelized sugar all over your stovetop it sucks it's not fun if you add hops if you add hops now you don't know how much hops stayed in the pot didn't it's just yeah Bullet point number three is even as a seasoned home brewer, I st- yeah watch it. As a seasoned home brewer, it's turned the ball valve off because oh. I can tell you times I've left my ball valve <laughs> yeah. open, I boiling wort just starts oh, going everywhere, everywhere since I start yeah. draining my uh-huh. boil kettle. But yeah, the last and final tip of the day for brewing an extract beer would be uh, can it just uh, show show them some yeast. Oh yeah, the yeast on these uh, the yeast that you're gonna put into the beer. Um, has a temperature uh, range. It's usually, you know, between virtually room temperature. I'm looking for the one on this. It's they just changed. Easy. They just changed their packaging too. Oh, okay. Is that Nottingham? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wait, yeah, this isn't Nottingham, but this is what it looks now. Yeah. Um. Almost looks like a small packet of fertilizer. Well, I don't see it, and I won't. Uh, it's gonna drive me crazy. But anyway, there's a specified temperature. It's going to be on the directions. It's going to be on the yeast. It's going to be somewhere. I have a lot of customers come in and they'll say, I need another packet of yeast. My beer's not fermenting. And I'm like, well, you use dry yeast. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't have problems with dry yeast. Yeah. So I f- have found when people are using, especially getting started off, when they're chilling their wort down, mm-hmm. they add all the water to it and say their thermostat. or t- the, it's not right here. The... The temperature uh, range on here only goes up to 97, so they don't see anything on here. They sprinkle the ward in. What happens is you just killed the yeast. Yeah. A lot of new home brewers are so concerned about something getting infected. Oh, okay. It's a buzz term that it is a very real thing. That's why we use star sand. That's why it was number one on the things to get. Yeah. But it, it's not that huge of a concern, especially when you have new equipment and mm-hmm. you took the time to sanitize it. If it's not within the temperature range, which to ferment a beer is generally room temperature, don't yeah. ferment it in your garage. You know, don't ferment any place that's going through high fluctuations of temperature, like a bathroom or something, but sure. a closet, your basement, mm-hmm. your bedroom, you know, where whatever you have, a coat closet. Away from an exterior wall. You're better off putting the lid on it and coming back to it tomorrow. Sure. And what I mean by that is don't put the yeast in there. Mm-hmm. Wait till tomorrow and you'll be all good. Yeah. I promise you. I shouldn't promise you. I <laughs> I stand behind it won't get infected. So uh, that would be the last thing is a lot of people have problems with getting fermentation started it's truly because they're not putting the yeast in at the specified temperature range. Oh, yeah. And they're worried about it getting infected. So they just go ahead and throw it in there anyway. And you right. basically just effectively killed it. Yeah. So I said the only other thing that I noticed, like when I was doing a lot of uh, like, uh, I guess, extract brewing is actually dealing with uh, dry malt extract or DME. Is that even if uh, so even if you turn off the burner and all that, the steam, just the steam coming off of your brew pot is enough to make this stuff clump up as you're trying to stir it in. So while a lot of directions will even say like try and you know add it in slowly or something like that as you're doing it, it's it's gonna be a pain. It you might start to freak out because you'll see like clumps start to form like eat in the kettle or even just in the bag, like that in the hole that you cut for the bag as you start to as you start to pour it in. Just be mindful of that. I mean, it's just one of those things where 
I mean, that's just, it's going to happen because of the amount, like the sugars in there, it'll start to it'll start to clump up as you start to pour it in there. So it's just, it can be a pain, but don't freak out. Yep. Yeah. So that pretty much ends it. Um, like I said, at this point now, if there's anyone, I see we have some viewers. I just got Mark connected back up. Does anybody have any questions? Put them in the chat. I mean, yep. that's kind of what we're here for. Um, I tell people all the time, I don't know absolutely everything because brewing is an art. So I'm not allowed to know absolutely everything. There's not always <laughs> right or wrong answers, but I will give you my opinion. I know so, the wrong things to do. How about that? <laughs> well, I have learned the hard way on a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, me too. I think it's part of the fun, right? I mean, it's... If you want to, I know I, I like to go off script like quite a bit. So even if I do get a recipe that I like, I will. I know try you and, do that. Oh, I, I will try and tweak <laughs> the heck out of it, and in, in order to try and make something that's might might be a little bit wild. So that's just my personal preference. But you find out what you like based off your own taste. So Mark, uh, I see I got you connected back. Is there anything that uh, you have a question on, or? Well, just want to make sure that people understand. There's time involved, but to truly get started, though, you just need a bucket a lid, an airlock, and sanitizer, and your ingredients. Isn't yep. that correct? Yeah. And if you want to make mead, honey, in a packet of yeast, we sell Red Star yeast here at the store. There's, I think there's 60 cents. Yeah. But and also, but people need to realize you have two or three weeks to do the rest. Meaning, yeah. get the fermenting done. That's cheap. Get started. Get the beer made. Get the fermentation process going. And then at that point, you can go back to HBYOB, right? And then buy the, mm -hmm. the bottling stuff. I mean, you know, it's, you don't have to have it all today. No, no, you really don't. I mean, you well, can come in and just kind of buy the base. You come in and buy how much does a, how much does an extract kit cost? Those yeah. run 30 to $50, depending on the ABV of the beer. Right. Generally. So depending on what you're going to get. So right now we're looking at, so this one, this is a, this is an American Amber. So somewhere in the like 5% is range. So I would guess somewhere between 25 and 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. Sure. So if you've got 25 to 30 bucks for your kit, uh, somewhere around, we just talked earlier about the equipment in order to actually like brew and like do the like, so primary fermentation. Truly, truly brew day. If you have a pot, it's 50 bucks between, yep. and that's ingredients and fermenters and everything. Yeah, that's it. Um, And, and that makes five gallons, which is just over two cases of beer. Now, next, that re reminds me next, uh, the 19th of February. February. Thank you. I need to use my fingers on that one. Um, of February, we will be going over basically packaging your beverage. So we'll right. go over bottling, kegging, corking, capping, eat flip top bottles. Y'all can do the corking. I'm all not, of I'm that. On the corking. Like what Mark just said, it's getting it into the fermenter that we're here for for you today. Yeah. We want to get the we want to get whatever you have into the fermenter because the hardest part of brewing is the waiting, especially getting started. Yeah. And it's the most important. Once, once you're like us, it's or or once you've been brewing for a while, you realize you will have fermented beverages coming out your ears. Yeah. But getting started and get you know the first rule of home brewing is drinking mm -hmm. a home brew. So getting that first home brew so you can do each subsequent batch yeah. is because people ask me. I guess that would be a good question. What is the minimum time it takes to to sample your first beer? Uh, I would say minimum time. Uh, so let's see, uh, five days. Five, six days? That gets into some very advanced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you're talking about like what we're what we're talking about here tonight in terms of like primary fermentation, like using the priming sugar and like bottle conditioning and all that. Uh two and a half weeks. Yep. I tell people two weeks. Yeah. So if it's your first beer and you were extremely anxious, which I know you are, I mean I was, I couldn't I watched it like a hawk every other day and, and had to Google something different. I mean, I remember it. And the first beer I made was absolutely wretched because I forgot one of the four steps and it didn't even ferment at all. Oh, I but I, and I choked and I terrible. choked through it like a champion. Yeah. So optimistic, but, <laughs> be, but uh, like I said, coming in here, it doesn't, if you're a part of a homebrew club, mm -hmm. if you're, if you don't have a homebrew club, we're not trying to do this like a homebrew club. We're trying to do this as like a homebrewing community is what we just, what we discussed. We want to do fun experiments, fun interactions every month, which is going to be the third Wednesday mm -hmm. of every month. Um, we want to do whether you come in, you're online, but we're going to do a topic. I will determine the topic. Um, and then we're going to do an experiment. Um, so I ran a poll, the poll for the next, not next Plus month, the, uh, but, uh, uh January, February. 
February. March. Yeah. Thank you. you <laughs> uh, March 18th is going to be, we did a poll and the winner was liquid versus dry yeast. Which I'm be, I'll be surprised if there's a massive difference, but Hey, I mean, I know I've seen folks swear up and down that you have to use liquid yeast. I've seen that before, but it, it depends. I have an opinion on it and that's why I do. I do have a requirement and that is we're going to do the dry yeast is going to be USO five. Okay. And the liquid yeast is either. It depends on whatever vendor you like, but the equivalent. Okay. So it's going to be the same yeast strain, different manufacturer. Both are supposed to be clean fermenting yeasts. Mm -hmm. So, it would be nice to pick if there's any flaws, it would be nice to pick up. Right, so right, if right. you are interested in brewing that batch of beer, uh, hold your hand up, direct message me, email me. You can uh, call me on the number. All of those are either going to be in the description box if you're watching this on YouTube or they will be um, on our website. Okay. So message me in any way you can come into the store. If you would like to, I will uh Give you the ingredients for the batch of beer. Um, free ingredients, y'all. Free I mean, batch of beer. You just got to share at least a six pack with us. That's easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do a five gallon batch of beer. Um, I, like I said, I will give you both yeast if you don't mind splitting them into two different fermenters. If you just want to do a 10 gallon batch, I do ask that you pay for the other five gallon batch, but basically just split them up. And we will do that uh, 3 18 2020. That way I don't have to use my fingers again. Um, <laughs> So just like I said, direct message me. I would love to, you know, I would like to at least talk to you a little bit because I would like to at least know that you've been homebrewing for a little while so yeah. it can rule out some of the things for me. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be, like I said, we're going to do just USO5 um, versus, you know, your 1056 by Y yeast flagship by Imperial, which is I hope they choose, yeah. or uh, WLP001 mm -hmm. by White Labs. So your choice, you will get USO5. Mm -hmm. so I still have that, a question for beginners. Yeah. All right. Because I've heard a couple of different things and I was a beginner once. What do you recommend the style of beer for the first person to make if they're brewing beer? Um, you know, a light beer, an American lager. You know, do you think that there's certain things someone should do the first time or do you think just whatever they want to do? So the way I would answer that is do not brew a light style beer. I do not recommend people doing that. I also do not pitches. recommend brewing a high ABV beer. Um, the American Amber is the is That's the kit the I recommend That's with. This one right here. Uh, Fat Tire is a beer most people recognize. Uh, it's supposed to be similar to that beer. And the reason why I recommend that is because when you get into high alcohol beers, for, uh, fermentation gets that much more important. Mm -hmm. And when you do really light style beers, if you make some mistakes, you will you'll taste, know. You'll taste it. You will know. So I recommend a uh, smell it immediately. Yeah, like, but ultimately, I tell people, "What do you like? Brew it." Now, if you come here and say you like Bud Light, unfortunately, I'm going to try to 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 get you at least to do like a Coles or an American Amber. Um, yeah. But generally speaking, I say the American Amber because it's not an expensive kit. So if you like royally screw it up, you know, you didn't, and you hate it, you didn't waste too much money, yeah. which I really don't think that you're going to run into issues, especially if you can call me and ask me questions on brew day, so like, like more like a Sierra Nevada flat tire. Yeah. I tell people there, yeah. don't brew light style beers. Don't brew high alcohol beers, but ultimately brew what you like. Um, but I also want to say that our store number nine, three, seven, four, zero, four, two, seven, three, nine. You can text that number text me even if it's not during store hours i'm not always the quickest but i do respond to texts they come to my phone so you can you can text me if, if you're in the middle of brew day and it's nine o'clock at night like i said i can't promise i'll respond but i do get them and you will eventually get an answer from me right right so if someone says hey i really like this and that's kind of what i'd like to brew something similar you'll help them get the kit that's like that and then persuade them one way or the other if you think it's a bad idea so we do see in the chat here uh chris will be brewing not this chris to my right no, not me Chris in the chat will be brewing the SO5 and Imperial uh, flagship uh, beer. Okay. So hope tomorrow. So we need a taker for the dry yeast, right? No. So oh, he can the, he's going to do both. So do both. the way that okay. we can control it is we're going to do whether he brews a five gallon or ten gallon batch. Mm -hmm. He's going to take that finished wort and split it into two fermenters got it, got it, got because it. that way mashing we can roll out mash all the different right. techniques. It has yeah, to be yeah. the finished wort. Mm -hmm takes the two doses right. and they're going to be stored in the same temperature environment. Mm -hmm. So that's the only way that this can be as controlled as we right. can for apples being home brewers. Apples as possible. Yeah. I mean, if I brew it and you brew it, 
we could use the same yeast. We're going to get different beers yeah. um, to a slight degree. So Chris is going to be brewing that. Uh, congratulations, Chris. Uh, hopefully you will do what would be just a good beer style that would go for USO five, like a pale ale yeah, or pale ale. an American yeah. Amber. I mean, you could do a wheat beer, an American wheat beer. So yeah, you get with me on what you want to do and we will, we will do that. I know Chris, he's been a long time, uh, uh, customer of the store so i know uh we don't have to do any background check with him we'll be good to go <laughs> and we'll be drinking that in march right that'll be we'll we will be drinking that in march the one we will be drinking next month or february April or february february okay. will be the kegged versus bottle condition and for those of you that don't know the difference between the two bottle condition can you send me some primary sugar when you bottle beer, you add sugar, and the sugar gets trapped into the solution because it's capped or uh, it's capped, so it dissolves into the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, kegged beer, it actually uses a CO2 tank. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been told that bottle-conditioned beers have finer bubbles and taste better, but I keg my beers because I'm too lazy to I bottle condition. That. All right, and I think right. I can do it. I All think right. I can do it. So if you want to come into the store and you right. think you can do it too, um, or at least tell the difference between the two, and you can be honest and say, I can't tell a difference. Yeah. That would be a fun experiment. And I already had that in the works. So we're going to start off with that one. Um, honestly, with that being said, do you have anything to add, Chris? No, uh, but like I just, the only thing I really want to echo is the like the community portion that Joey was talking about, because I think it's really important for folks that want to get into the hobby and it very much is that like a hobby and that if it doesn't have to get any more advanced, you know, because we were talking about using like refractometers and magnetic stir plates and all that. You don't have to like advance or like get into that advanced stuff. If you just like brewing your little old, like you know, as close to Bud Light as you like, Continue doing that until, you know, like for the next 20, 30 years. If you like the science, you like the art, and you want to get into it, you can do that. So there's so many different paths that you can take with brewing that there's really no one single path to actually like learning about home brewing. So if you have questions or you want to just like talk about like home brewing or anything like that, I mean, feel free to talk to us through Facebook, come down to the store, text Joey. I mean, any, any of those options are available to you. So it, you don't really have to be as intimate. Like it's not really that intimidating to get into this. I guess the only thing I would add to that would be whether it's being part of the show mm -hmm. or being a home brewer, please don't be bashful. I was brand new at this at one point. Same. I thought I knew a lot and I opened up a home brew store. Yeah. And I learned I didn't know nothing then compared to what I know now. And I still look forward to the future. So yeah. there is not a silly question. Um, you just got to jump into it. And that's and honestly getting together. There is nobody. I've never met a single customer that's going to judge you if you ask what feels like a silly question. So please, the quicker you just ask the question, yeah. the quicker you can get good feedback and it, it explore the hobby and have fun with it. Everybody seems to go with a different direction with home brewing. Um, and so, but my, my biggest thing would be whether it's getting on the cast, don't worry about the headphones. Like Mark said, yeah. we don't have headphones on right now. No. We don't have, I it's mean, you know, you, like you can just use your, your, your iPhone or whatever phones are popular these days. Right. And so whether it's getting on the cast or homebrewing, please don't be bashful. That's why we're here. We want to build a community of people. Y'all I've had smoke coming out of my kettle because I wound up screwing up so bad. So if I can screw up and still be a part of this, I mean, you guys can do it too. Mark, do you have any other questions? Yes. Um, on uh, February the 19th, do I bring my own mug? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, I do have plastic cups. So if you have, if you want to drink out of a plastic cup, by all means, if you have your own uh, fancy glass or you want to bring in, if you have your own beverage uh, and you want to bring it in and get some feedback on it or not, or just share the excitement of how excited you are to brew your beer, please let us know because a lot of home brewers will think you want feedback on uh, you know, different notes that they get on it. But like I said, if you have something you want to bring in, uh, if you want to be part of the experiment, um, mm -hmm. it, like I said, honestly, just the three of us. Oh, we could wind we, up filling like two hours worth of like beer discussions. So, yeah. But the more people we get here, like I said, don't be a, you can be part of the experiment. Um, or if you want to bring your own beverage, like I said, if you show up at six o'clock, uh, it'll be kind of like a bottle share. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll go over the experiment and then at seven o'clock, we're, that's when the store closes. We'll lock the door and we'll get ready for the, for the cast. Let's have some fun, man. Well, that's thanks on, on, for having me. I'm sorry. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Chris, do you have anything you want to plug? 
No, I think that's it for me, man. I think we'll have like I'll I'll plug some football stuff the next time I'm on, but for tonight, I think we're good. Mark. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Well, thank you all for showing up today. Um, like I said, it'll be a lot of fun. Next month we will be uh going over packaging your beverage. So uh see us on 219, 2020. All right, catch y'all later. Cheers. Yeah.